at the very beginning of safe, we were, we were GIS and CAD and I was at a show once and the guy says, Oh, you've done the third leg. And I was like, great. And then he says, and then I said to my, then my, immediately I said, what is the third leg? And he said, BIM. And so, you know, GIS and CAD, we've been working with them together, going CAD to GIS, GIS to CAD. And BIM really, in many cases, is supplanting CAD for, for designing buildings and, and things like that. So Autodesk has CAD, they have BIM. And so the nice thing with BIM, and when we talk, start talking about these 3D models and indoor mapping and all these things, you know, we now we need to in, integrate BIM and get it into the right location with GIS. Maybe we want to see our buildings in the GIS, so maybe we only want the outer shell. Um, maybe we want our building in GIS. We want it such that when we enter, now we see the inside. So, so this is really the gap of the, the merging of the outdoor and the indoor. That's really what we're trying to say here. Is um, you know, GIS is outdoor, BIM is indoor. We want to support this seamless transition. Um, so, so certainly with um, navigation of moving indoors and outdoors. So, yeah. So, so Denver. Um, is another airport we work with. They have their GIS for all their um, their CAD as built, and their CAD exports are lines where the line work only. So, so um, yeah. So you can just see this. Denver is a massive airport, and they had data with rooms numbers that were all entered manually. But it was it's a huge 18 million square feet. That's amazing. I was just at a conference, and the fellow there was talking about just the number of rooms in Denver and it was a mind boggling underneath the, all the public spaces and, and, um, and, um, you know, there's also a lot of nice, um, theories on conspiracy theories about what goes on in Denver, but, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. And of course, updating all this is a real nightmare, right? And that's really, um, what this is all about. Okay. There we go. So BIM is a new standard. So Revit, we're seeing this more and more, more facilities when they're building new buildings, Revit is really what it started at right from the, um, the ground up. And the idea is, is when a building is delivered, you also deliver the Revit model. And the Revit model is great for maintenance. Um, and as the buildings change, you keep that Revit model up to date. Again, that's the digital twin of the building. And it can really enable you to manage the facilities uh, much, much better than it can by having these 2D CAD. Let's face it, if you're if you look at a 2D CAD drawing that was used for building and then you look around the real room, it's it's a very difficult transition from one to the other. And um, so that's kind of the uh, the idea there. Yeah, the other advantage of BIM is that it allows the, you to enforce standards easier than CAD. I mean, CAD, yeah. you, you, you print out your, your standards and you hope that all your CAD operators adhere to them. And yeah. BIM, you can actually code those standards into the into the template itself. Yeah. And a sort of, sort of the, the nature of the, the BIM modeling is such that all your data in a way is it kind of comes pre-cleaned for you because it's it's an, it's a three-dimensional wall. So you don't have to worry if the lines don't join or anything because it's a wall. It's a, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. It's in proper shape three dim in three yeah. dimensions already. So it, it does. It's it's a whole several steps above CAD data when it comes to the data cleanliness. Yeah, that's a good point. <clears throat> that, that, going back to the data quality and the data um, validation, we we also have some a number of organizations. They do have a CAD standard, and so I was just in Germany talking with an organization about how FME can have them. They have a CAD standard, and then they have third party contractors actually go and collect the data. And the problem was the data was coming back. And it wasn't exactly in the CAD standard, so but they wouldn't find out till later as they were starting to process it. So we were talking about FME could help them with that because like we have our IMDF validator, we could set up work with them to set up a CAD validator that would run all the rules that were necessary for their CAD standard so that then um, the contractor could then through a website or an email or something, email them in and validate and get the response back. And this would actually save the contractor time as well and be a tool that would make them better and um, and and, um, and also make um, make the other partner. Because what happens now is the, the person will be in the field, they collect the data, they send it in, and then they go home. And then, you know, a week or so later, they would say, oh, that data you submitted was invalid. So that's very expensive for everybody. Yeah. yeah. And here are some of the organizations that uh, we're working on BIM and GIS projects. So, so clearly, if an organization is has Revit files, that's where you want to start. Mm -hmm.